Hello, and welcome to this bourbon edition of a whiskey tasting session. It's very good to have you here with us today. Have you visited here before for a tasting? Yes, yes, you're right, I have seen you before. That was for the St. Patrick's Day whiskey tasting session, yes. Very good to see you here again. And since the St. Patrick's Day whiskey tasting session, have you found any whiskies of preference or maybe any other alcohols? Oh, very good. So you've been exploring all different types of whiskies. That's very good. So, as mentioned, this whiskey tasting session today will celebrate the bourbons of America. Are you familiar with many bourbons? A couple? Okay. Well, look forward to this tasting session because you'll be introduced not only to a variety of different bourbons, but also a delicious mix to drink that you can make with some delicious rye-focused whiskies or bourbons. Great. So before we begin, of course, you will begin with your flight of drinks and feel free to follow along as we go through each of the drinks today. Okay. So before we begin with the tasting session, I think it's really important to discuss the history, knowledge and practices of exactly how bourbons are made. So, whilst all bourbons are whiskies, they still have their own unique properties that define them distinctly as bourbons and not just a whiskey. So, for example, the majority of bourbons are made in the state of Kentucky in the United States. However, they don't have to be made in the state of Kentucky. It's a little bit of an urban legend. However, all bourbons must be aged in new charred oak barrels. Mm -hmm. Those are the barrels we were talking about last time, that very commonly Scotch and Irish whiskies are distilled in after they're used on bourbons. Mm -hmm. So they really bring in all those delicious flavours from the wood. So, when the bourbon is barrelled, it has to hit a certain proof or alcohol content in the spirit. The mash must be distilled at 160 proof and aged in barrels until it is no more than 125 proof. During this tasting session today, I will also heavily be speaking about charring. So, while scotch uses the technique of peating for the smoky flavour for their drinks, bourbons like to focus on charring. Charring is when, in the barrel, it is set on fire for a specific set of time. This helps distort and change the nature and flavour of the combinations of the spirit and the wood. This isn't necessarily to create a smoky flavour by any means, but just to manipulate the flavours to get that exact mixture that the distiller is looking for. So, for a number one char, or for as long as the barrel is set on fire, would be approximately 15 seconds. For a number two char, the barrel would be set on fire for 30 seconds. For a number three char, which is the most common for bourbons, is 35 seconds and a number four char is 55 seconds. This is also nicknamed as the alligator skin technique. And what that means is, is that after about 55 seconds, the wood staves begin to create a rough, shiny texture similar to alligator skin. There is one example today out of these bourbons that does use a number four char, 
and I'll be very interested to see if you'll be able to notice which one of these bourbons uses the number four char. It's uncommon for bourbons to be charred at a number four level. However, there has been one instance where the bourbon maker Buffalo Trace actually made a number seven charred bourbon, and that was charred for approximately three and a half minutes. So that was a definitive, distinctive bourbon. So let's begin with the tasting. Feel free to try whichever one you're comfortable to throughout the tasting session. We'll begin by bringing in the aroma of the bourbon through the nasal passage. We'll then bring it to the palate, taste it. You can feel free to swirl the drink around in your mouth, chew on it with your teeth. It's a technique that some people like to use to check the viscosity of the liquid and to see if they can pick up any different flavours because whiskies and bourbons are very light, they're very beautiful spirits. And then we'll assess the aftertaste of each bourbon. Okay, I'll let you know a little bit of information about each of these bourbons too because they all have very interesting backstories. Okay, so the first one we're going to try is the Elijah Craig bourbon. So this bourbon, I would say, has the colour of almost burnt copper and the aroma hmm, I'd say is vanilla bean there's definitely notes of vanilla bean throughout the layers of this particular bourbon yes, yes, it's a very typical scent to bourbons but it's, it's quite complex. There are several completely opposite scents that are arising, especially as it sits. I would say sweet fruits, perhaps berry, and mint. There is definitely this slight cooling sensation that exudes through the warmth of this bourbon. Mm. Typically, I find that when a bourbon is slightly on the lower proof side for a bourbon, you tend to notice some of the more subtleties of the flavours that are mixed in with the alcohol itself. So, the Elijah Craig bourbon is comprised of selected whiskies that are approximately 8 to 12 years of age. So this bourbon doesn't have a specific age to the whiskey used in it. It just likes to infuse from various barrels and batches. Okay, so let's give this one a try. goes down smooth. Very smooth, what do you think? Mm. It has a lovely, warm, traditional bourbon, a classic sensation as it goes down, but it has these excellent woody notes. There is definitely some spice at the beginning, and it trails off slightly near the end. Mmm, you agree, yes. This definitely has some spice to it. There is smokiness, there is that char from the burning of the barrel. It's very noticeable, but not unpleasant. I believe there might be a little bit of nutmeg there too. Mmm, it's fusing with the rest of those spices in there. The finish of it, I would say, is long, sweet, slightly toasty. There is definitely a sense of all of those flavours combining right at the end there for that aftertaste. Mm -hmm. My palate feels complimented by this drink and not overwhelmed. What do you think? Oh, very good, so you happen to like that one, good. 
So I want to tell you a little bit more about the Elijah Craig bourbon before we move on because I do find that it has a very interesting history to it. So the Elijah Craig bourbon is distilled by Heaven Hill. Now you might be familiar with the Heaven Hill distillery. It also distills Rittenhouse Rye, Evan Williams, and they also happen to distill their own range of Evan Hill drinks. So back in 1879, Elijah Craig was considered the father of burning barrels to create this beautiful taste to the spirit. They're considered the father of bourbon for that reason, due to them burning those barrels. It's unknown whether the barrels were burned accidentally or intentionally to create this sophisticated, warm, toasty, spicy taste. However, due to that beautiful, charring sensation, bourbons were born. It's very interesting. So, what do you happen to think of the Elijah Craig small batch bourbon? Mmm, it's very good. One thing I would always recommend to a bourbon drinker or a whiskey drinker who is a first time drinker is that you should always start at the lower proof and go up. Higher proof whiskies or bourbons can be a little bit daunting because you have to really work the flavours. Whiskey is knowledgeable in the sense that you should start as a learner and go up to more sophisticated flavours. A lot of people may try a higher proof whiskey as an entry level and may just say, oh, it burns, I dislike whiskey. And I feel like that might be an unfair perception of those higher proof whiskies, especially considering all of the love and work that goes into creating them. So best to start on the slightly lower proof sides. You like that one then, very good. And we'd be happy to know that this bourbon has won several awards. It won the San Francisco World Spirits Competition for Best Small Batch Bourbon in 2018, and it got a 93 out of 100 in 2018 from the Ultimate Spirits Challenge. So definitely tried and true, loved and a staple for bourbon lovers' collections. Excellent. Okay, so now let's move on to your second drink. So, the next bourbon that I'm going to be introducing to you is actually in this small little bottle here. This is the Woodford Reserve 90.4 Small Batch Bourbon Whiskey. This was distilled and is situated in Kentucky's oldest distillery site. The distillery has been considered a National Historic Landmark since the year 2000. So this one is really interesting because of its mash bill. When I say it's mash bill, I'm talking about the contents of corn, barley, and rye. What you tried before was mostly corn. However, this one is still mostly corn, as all bourbons have to be at least 51% corn. However, this is considered a slightly more rye-focused bourbon. So it's just a slight bit more rye than you would expect corn. So this one is 72% corn, 18% rye, and 10% malt. So whilst this isn't the highest percentage of rye you'll see in a whiskey, those are just other forms of whiskies, those are just rye whiskies at that point, this is definitely for those who want still a bourbon they like that distinct flavour of rye. I wanted to show you this one today because the flavour of rye is very, very distinctive. You'll know a rye whiskey when you smell it and when you drink it. So this is a rye-focused bourbon. So you may have noticed in front of you there are two drinks. I've actually made you a Manhattan, but I've also given you a straight Woodford Reserve for you to try also. The reason for this is the Woodford Reserve is a beautiful drink to make for a Manhattan. The two most common drinks that people will make from bourbons or whiskies are a Manhattan 
and an old fashioned. So for you today, I have made you the Manhattan. And the reason I'm giving you a Manhattan today is because it is a classic, beautiful fusion of various different flavours and mixes. Okay. So, the appearance of the Woodford Reserve, if you'd like to raise the tasting glass, we'll move on to the Manhattan in a second if you feel like it. Okay. The appearance is clear, honey-like, almost amber, yes. On the nose, mm, it is very distinctive. Yep, yeah, it's completely different to other corn focused bourbons or whiskies in general. It's very unique. You'll know a rye after this. Mm hmm. It is heavy, it's extremely heavy. It's rich, but it also has very subtle layers, I think, of mint. Maybe orange. Perhaps tobacco spice. What do you think? Hmm. It's very interesting, yes. It does almost have a dusting of cocoa. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And of course, that traditional, very faint beautiful vanilla scent that is typical in whiskey. Vanilla is so excellently complementary to a bourbon. Okay, so let's try this one now. Very rich, very chewy. Gets into all of the crevices of your teeth and the layer of your tongue. begins complex at first, and then you discover the layers of flavours from there. Cinnamon. And the cocoa that you could pick up from, from the aroma is balanced right through to the palate. Mm -hmm. There's notes of toffee, caramel, chocolate, but still that spice, that gritty, punchy flavour. has an excellent tail. The end of the aftertaste of this one is beautiful. It's warm, it's smooth, and it lasts a while in the throat and on the tongue. And all of that heat just blends down like a rhythm from the mouth down the throat. It's excellent. Very silky, very smooth. What do you think? Mmm, you agree? Excellent. Yes, it is very different to the um, Elijah Craig drink, yes. You'll be happy to know that this bourbon has won several gold awards, including in 2014 and 2016 for the Whiskies of the World Awards, it won a gold, and it won a double gold medal from the San Francisco World Spirits Competition in 2013. It also won its Best in Class Gold Medal from the International Spirits Challenge in 2012. Mm -hmm. So this has been a beloved classic in every whiskey collector's and enthusiast's collection for quite some time now. Mm -hmm. Do you like this one? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, let me invite you to try the Manhattan now. I don't personally have the Manhattan with me, but you certainly do, and I would welcome you to try that as a unique experience of a bourbon. Have you ever had whiskey mixed? Okay, so just, just on ice or straight, okay. Well, let me tell you a little bit about what makes up your Manhattan today. So it is two parts Woodford Reserve, the exact one that is here today and the one you were tasting. It's also made up of a half part of sweet vermouth and a half part of dry vermouth. 
you'll notice the vermouth the first time that you try it in the Manhattan. It's also made up of a dash of aromatic bitters. Just to let you know, by the way, to make a classic Manhattan does typically include a maraschino cherry, some aromatic bitters, and vermouth. You can use dry, sweet, or both. Typically, you'll like to use vermouth, the bitters, and the cherry, though. Mm-hmm. And those are all mixed together and served on ice. So, please feel free to enjoy that. You can have the entire drink. You can pass whatever you feel comfortable with. I'm just happy that you're trying bourbon in a different way. Mm-hmm. And Manhattan really emphasises the spice that is involved with bourbons. Vermouth is almost not medicinal, but that might be the closest description. And when you combine the bitters and the vermouth, you get an almost herbal, slightly floral experience. And when infused with your bourbon of choice, it really does highlight the delicious wonderful, smoky, spicy flavours of your bourbon. Mm -hmm. Enjoy. So now we're going to be moving on to our third bourbon for this tasting session today, and that is going to be this drink that you see in front of you here. This is Knob Creek. This is a nine-year aged bourbon whiskey. So you can feel free to continue on your Manhattan or now move on to the Knob Creek for the tasting. So, the Knob Creek bourbon has a very traditional mash bill. It is 75% corn, 13% rye, and 12% malted barley. This is a 9 year aged, 100 proof, straight bourbon distilled by Jim Beam. The relationship actually between Jim Beam and the company Knob Creek is actually quite personal and quite sweet. So despite Jim Beam simply owning this company and distilling with them, they actually have a very good relationship and a family history between the two companies. I'll let you know a little bit more about that in just a short while. So the company Knob Creek is named after the small creek that ran alongside Abraham Lincoln's childhood home. And the creek is also just south of the distillery. So it's quite a sweet and historical background to this drink. So Jim Beam has four small batch collections, with Knob Creek being a small batch bourbon and one of those collections. Jim Beam also supports Basil Hayden's, Baker's Bourbon and Booker's Bourbon in their small batch collections. Jim Beam has stated that they age their small batch collections in maximum char barrels to pull every bit of natural sweetness from the oak. Jim Beam retired Knob Creek's promised nine year age collections previous to 2020 because they could not guarantee the small batch would in fact be aged for nine years. The small batch collection was introduced by Booker No in 1992. He was the grandson of Jim Beam and is considered the father of small batch bourbon. So a little bit of history there for you that I wanted to recite for you. Mm -hmm. So the relationship of course between Jim Beam and Knob Creek isn't purely from a business standpoint but actually from a family standpoint so it's quite nice in that regard. So whilst typically a small batch whiskey is made up of whiskies from 10 to 20 different barrels, it is a vague term, so you cannot say precisely how many barrels typically the small batch bourbon has come from. So we can only estimate somewhere between 10 and 20 approximately. Fun fact about this bourbon, however, the DEA agent Hank Schrader from the beloved TV show Breaking Bad, has a love for whiskies in that show, but is also featured in his bar collection, and he exchanges and shares that with Walter White. Little fun fact for you. Also, B 
beautifully decorated. This bottle is stamped with a wax seal and glass embossment. It's a very beautiful bottle to have in your collection. You'll also see that there are these little, what appear as imperfections, but I think just make up an almost rustic appearance of this bottle. It feels like it's older than it is, and it's almost a family memento. Quite beautiful. It's not structured perfectly, and I like that it's robust, but personal, I think. So, let's begin now by picking up on the aroma. So, I would say this has a slight nuttiness, and unlike the other whiskies, this doesn't seem to be emphasizing the vanilla and spice immediately, so I can really appreciate that in this bourbon. If you take a big inhale of this drink, however, you do get that vanilla, as you get in the rest of the bourbons. Light oak. Slight, ever so slight dab of caramel. Certainly not as many sweet layers as some of the other bourbons presented here today. But, right at the bottom there, almost at the end, of the scent is almost a slight scent of candy floss or marshmallow. I think that's a very excellent and very inviting way to begin this drink. It has an exceptional and beautiful traditional bronze colour, and I can admire that about this bourbon. What do you happen to think about the aroma on this one? Hmm. Okay. All right. So, let's begin now with a sip. Mmm. Peppercorn. Peppercorn. It has that spice, but flavoured and very punchy, but not obnoxious. perfectly balanced vanilla. As you chew slightly more into the liquid, you can certainly pick up on that char from the barrel. And caramel. Very similar to the aroma on this one. Several layers, complex, but distinctively layered. They complement each other one after another, and then right at the end of the aftertaste, it fuses all of the warmth, sweetness, and spice together for a beautiful blend. It sits in the throat really comfortably. There's not a lot of heat to end on this one. It just goes down very comfortably. What do you think of this one? Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. All right. Well... This whiskey happened to win the 2016 award from the International Wine and Spirits Competition for Best Rye Worldwide Whiskey, which is very interesting considering that the mash bill of this one does not particularly emphasise rye. If I had to say, for preference of a rye whiskey, I might suggest the Woodford for a more clear, precise, representation of a bourbon rye whiskey. For a best rye whiskey, there are certainly ones that even go up to all, all the way up to 100% rye. So, I think that's wonderful that it won that award. However, I might personally recommend the Woodford Reserve if you're looking for a more rye-focused one. However, for a clear, simple, good, true, honest, bourbon. I would definitely go for this one. What do you think? Hmm. Okay. Okay. So, let's move on now to our next whiskey. So, the next whiskey that I would love to show you today and would invite you to try is this one. 
This one is the Wild Turkey 101 Proof Bourbon. This one is a blend of six, seven, and eight year old bourbons and is distilled by Wild Turkey themselves. This one has a mash bill of 75% corn, 13% rye, and 12% barley, making that identical in its mash bill to the Knob Creek bourbon. However, this is a 101 proof bourbon, so it is going to appear a little bit stronger, punchier, and slightly more mature tasting than some of the other bourbons you have tried today. So this will be the strongest bourbon you have tried so far, which is why I've saved it for later on into this tasting session. So, despite it being identical to the Knob Creek in that regard, it's still considered a high rye bourbon, the same as the Knob Creek bourbon whiskey. This one has a beautiful deep gold colour, very beautiful but classic. So, I'll tell you a little bit of the history and the backstory for how this drink is distilled. So, this bourbon is distilled at a very low proof in order to help maintain all of the flavours during aging. The bourbon comes out at 109 proof and is then distilled to 101 proof. This helps keep the bourbon as close to the taste of when it was inside the barrel. And I can really respect that for a bourbon. And included to that, to help replicate the taste from bottle to barrel as closely as this one has, but the price point of this one is incredibly impressive. This is one of the cheapest bourbons here, but the quality of this bourbon has been greatly maintained from the distillation, the filtration, and the composition of the liquid all the way to the bottle. So I have quite a lot of respect for not only for this company, for this exact bourbon for that reason. They really emphasise that everybody can try bourbon at a low price point in a very respectful, punchy, flavoursome manner. So this one I would highly recommend as a staple for bourbon and whiskey lovers collections. So, let's begin now by sniffing and pulling in the aroma. This one has slightly similar flavours in its aroma to some of the other bourbons. Toffees, caramel, they are present at first. And then there's this beautiful blend of spice, vanilla, toasted oak, butterscotch, just layered throughout in such a distinctive, beautiful way. And the base of it, I think, is made up of all of those. Sometimes there's this almost sickly, rich, plain alcohol scent at the end of some spirits, but this one, beginning to end, is just fantastic as an aroma. It begins beautiful, it ends beautiful. The transition of scents of this one, exceptionally graceful. Again, for the price point, very impressive. You like this one also? Okay. Well, let's try this one now and explore those flavours a little bit more through the palette. This one is very similar to the scent. Sweet flavours of vanilla. The toffee is present right from the get-go, from the first sip of this one. Mm-hmm. Okay, you think so? Okay. But also though, however, when the liquid is chewed on and left to swirl around the mouth for a little bit longer, there are previously undiscovered notes coming through. There is maple, there is cinnamon, and there is a beautiful robust char on this one. You can really taste the almost burning process of the barrel through this one. It has spice, it has warmth. It's so elegantly balanced out 
by those slightly sweet and vanilla notes. You like this one also? Very good. So the next bourbon that we're going to be moving on to today has to be, of course, from Jim Beam. Now, whilst Jim Beam makes lots of different bourbons, we decided to celebrate for the month of celebrating bourbons the Devil's Cut Whiskey by Jim Beam. The reason we're celebrating Devil's Cut by Jim Beam is because of the distillation and creation process of this drink it has a very, very interesting process of being made. And there is a reason behind the Devil's Cut name. So this is, of course, distilled by Jim Beam, the same as the Knob Creek spirit. This does have an undisclosed mash bill, however, but experts claim that this one has approximately 75 to 76 percent corn makeup, approximately 12 percent rye, and 10 percent malted barley. Nothing too unpredictable about the mash bill of this one. However, the flavour and presentation of the flavours is very unique and in no way is represented by the mash bill of this one. There is also no age mentioned for this drink, which is slightly unusual to mention neither the mash bill nor the age. However, we can say that it is aged for at least two years, as all bourbons must be aged for at least two years. This does have, however, a deep beautiful gold colour and gorgeous aroma that we're going to focus on a little bit more in just a second. However, I would like to quote Jim Beam themselves on how they make the Devil's Cut drink exactly. So, if you don't mind, as you feel free to bring in the aroma of the drink, I'll let you know a little bit about the Devil's Cut process from the company themselves. So, from the words of Jim Beam, when bourbon ages, a portion of the liquid evaporates through the barrel and up toward the heavens. Believed to be the angels claiming their dues, this has been dubbed the angels' share. Jim Beam Devil's Cut is not that portion. Instead, it's made from the liquid that gets trapped deep inside the wood of the barrel, the devil's share. And through our propriety process, we found a way to extract it. So that is the exact quote from Jim Beam's company. So this one is slightly more interesting because now we're discovering not only the layers of what was inside the barrel, we're now looking inside the wood of the barrel. So this is a very interesting experience and one that I would welcome all whiskey enthusiasts to give a go. There's not many whiskey companies give this technique a try, so definitely worth an attempt at a good sip at this one. Alright, so the aromas of this one, completely unique to this one. Again, despite that mash bill, despite that traditional mash bill, there are scents of almost mint wintergreen, orange, which is so fascinating to see such a harsh scent, such as mint, gracefully blended in with such a delicate, beautiful scent such as orange. And there is honey layered throughout the scent of this one. But fantastically, I detect clove. I think clove is such a beautifully underused spice that's emphasised on in whiskey, and I can understand why, given it's a very punchy, clear, sometimes overbearing scent, but this is balanced well. I really do think so. It's almost very light. It takes a while to really bring in the clove on this one, and I can appreciate that. Too much clove could very much overwhelm some of the other scents in this one. Very pleasant, very pleasant. This 
is also a 90 proof bourbon, by the way, which I believe is the weakest of the bourbons that I've shown you today. So not only is this good for entry level whiskey drinkers, but it's also a wonderful way to taste all of those beautiful flavours mixed up from inside the barrel. So unique experience and excellent for those that wish to give whiskey a try. It has a fair price point too on this one. So let's give this one a go. Right off the cuff, brown sugar syrup, almost irresistibly sweet, despite this notion that it would be harsh and gritty. It's quite sweet. But then, during the end of the taste and the aftertaste, there's that bitter oak exactly what they were hoping to show through the interior of that barrel wood. It's almost dry at the end of the consumption of this one, but still quite pleasant. Harsh and brutal at the end there, but very inviting at first, slightly almost misleading. You are surprised by the fact that it's sweet at first, and then you are immediately reminded this is a double cut drink. And this is one that has some very serious, punchy flavours right at the end of that. Mm. You can really taste the char on the oak of this one right from beginning to end, but the aftertaste really does emphasise the heat and the warmth on this one. Unlike some of those other whiskies that go down warm and end cool, this one stays warm on the way down, I think. You think so too, yes. Despite it being a low proof, or a lower proof whisky rather, it packs a punch. It makes use of every single percent of the proof on that one. It's quite a robust and quite powerful flavoured whiskey. Mm. Lots of spice scattered throughout on this one. The sweetness is gone by the end of the aftertaste of this one, and I think you're just left with a lot of almost dryness, heat, warmth. Certainly a warming drink. Might be excellent for the winter months. Good, I like that one. Very good. For this one, this won the 2017 International Spirits Challenge, and it won a gold for American whiskies. So, this one can also be backed up and verified in its accolades. So now, I would like to move on to the weakest bourbon whiskey for the tasting session today. This will also be the final bourbon that we'll be tasting for today's session. And then I'll ask you which one you think, of all the bourbons you've tried today, received the heaviest charring. Okay. So, the last one that we're going to be moving on to today is a 70 proof Evan Williams Peach Bourbon. I'll just show you the bottle here. So, here is the bottle for this one. This is a beautiful golden amber colour, and this one, as you may remember from the beginning of the tasting session, is also distilled by Heaven Hill, just like the Elijah Craig bourbon. So, this one, as mentioned, is just a very shy 70 proof whiskey or bourbon. This one is excellent as a mixer. This can be enjoyed on ice, or mixed with an iced tea in the warmer months. But this is also an excellent entry-level whiskey for those wanting to give whiskies or bourbons a try for the first time. This also has an excellent price point for that, retailing at somewhere between $10 to $12 for this bottle. So, let's have a look at this one now. This one 
is not complicated. There is not a lot to this one. There is distinct rich peach. Because of the very low proof of this bourbon, you're going to get a lot of those other flavours coming through, and what you see come through on this one, as you can smell on this one, is peach. Very simple, very clear. Bourbon, fresh, sweet peaches. Delicious for the end of these final warmer days that we're experiencing. And also good for those days when you just want to drink something a little bit different to your traditional old-fashioned Manhattan or straight bourbons. Something a little bit more on the obnoxiously sweet side. Not much to this one other than the peach and the bourbon, so let's give this one a go. Minimal warmth. Goes down nice and clear. Small hints of honey fused in with this one, I think, but distinct, clear presence of peach and your typical classic bourbon. Yes, this one's very refreshing. This one can be lovely, especially as mentioned, mixed with an iced tea. The aftertaste on this one, I don't think I even need to go back in to try that one again, matches exactly the aroma and the palette. So what you see with this one is very much what you get. You'll find from trying bourbons that are slightly more complex than this peach Evan Williams, it's a little bit open to interpretation. Um, typically, the companies won't give you every ingredient that was included in how they mix up their batches to not give away all their secrets and recipes. So it is open to interpretation. Something that you may taste in a bourbon might be slightly different to what I taste. But by chewing on the spirit itself, giving it some time to sit, wafting it in, we can begin to pass back and forth our opinions on the taste of it and maybe point out things that the other person was missing. So it's quite fascinating in that regard. So, out of all of the bourbon whiskies you've tried today, which one do you think happened to have the heaviest char? Yep, you are exactly right. It is the Wild Turkey 101 Proof. It did have that very distinct char taste to it, but lovely of complex flavours throughout. But you could tell, couldn't you? Yeah, it's very, very strong. It's not certainly for a novice whiskey drinker, something to try a little bit down the line. Whilst bourbon is, of course, whiskey, it is its own unique, complex journey of flavours that, as you can see, can be enjoyed in a variety of manners and straight, unique themselves. So, what did you happen to think of the Evan Williams peach? Okay, yes, once you try a 70 proof at the end of trying something between 90 all the way up to 101, it does go much higher than that by the way, um, it's a little bit more tolerable, a little bit easier as you become more accustomed to bourbons. Mm -hmm. So, what did you happen to like or dislike? You can be completely honest. Okay, okay. Well, thank you so much for joining us here today for this whiskey tasting session celebrating the bourbons of America. We actually have another whiskey tasting session coming up in just a short while, and you'll be notified of that shortly in the next coming months. Take care. Goodbye.